Avonal community and other viewers. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, this is Mazzy, and I'm with Greg of the Vinyl Rundown. There will be a link to Greg's uh, channel in the bottom here. And we're doing Jewish artists, Jewish musicians mostly overview. Uh, I was inspired to do this because someone gave me this book a couple of years ago, and it's called And You Shall Know Us by the Trail of Our Vinyl. And it's all about uh, <laughs> Jewish records. And I never saw that book. I love this. Wow. Where it says, oh, um, I was going to show that guy, Bill Dana, and Jose Jimenez. Exactly, totally racist. But and um, I was going to do a, I was going to do a whole thing about Jews pretending to be Mexican. Well, that's funny because Al Tijuana and the Jewish brass. <clears throat> with the, the irony of that is because Herb Alpert is Jewish, but I didn't include Herb, Herb Alpert. I meant to include Herb Alpert because you know he's like a billionaire now, right? Pretending and, to be Mexican, and I forgot right, to pull so, Herb Alpert. So um, we're going to just do the do thing. I group mine in groupings, not just necessarily artists. Um, and we'll just go through it as quickly as we can and how we feel like it. And I'm going to start with Greg and let's start. Okay. Well, thank you. This is an interesting topic. <laughs> There's a lot of, a lot of underlying stuff about Jewish identity. And like we just mentioned Herb Alpert, why are there so many Jews who kind of pretend not to be Jewish. And in the old days, you kind of didn't want a big, long, crazy last name, Zimmerstein or whatever. I'm going to start with somebody who's super uh, involved in his Jewish identity. He, his name is Paul, but he changed it to his Jewish Hebrew name, Matis Yahu. Do you guys know Matis Yahu? I do know. Hey, are you going to do some Matis Yahu? We're going to have some overlap here. Matis Yahu is a Orthodox Jewish reggae rapper from Pennsylvania. I've heard of him. I've never heard his records. I've never heard Matis Yahu. Oh my God. So uh, in the old days, when he first started his career, full on uh, beard and yarmulke and everything. Oh, look at this nice intro. Look at the CD. Uh, he used to perform in the full on Hasidic, the hats, the beard. I remember seeing videos of him with that period. He's, he's clean shaven now. A little glare in here. Such but a mensch. He's got a lot of tunes about Israel, uh, Tel Aviv, King Crown of Judah. Uh, but he's a, he's a reggae rapper, Orthodox. That is, that, that's a very small grouping. A whole <laughs> yeah. video on those guys. But I genuinely like his music. Okay. All and, right. Uh, Matis Yahu. Okay. Keep an eye out for him. Um, my first batch is actually, I, I could not start this and do records without doing comedy because apparently there are several Jews who are comedians in the world. Are you sure? <laughs> right. So I'm going to, I have a batch of four, but I'm going to, uh, th I think are very important, three of which, and obviously you can't do it without talking about uh, Gus Marx or the Marx Brothers. Woody Allen, who I'm a big fan of. Mm -hmm. And of course, the more controversial of the one is Lenny Bruce, um, the great Lenny Bruce, long story. But musically, I'm going with this one because this was someone, my parents bought his records all the time, and we played him in the house all the time as Alan, Alan Sherman. Sherman. Uh, Alan Sherman basically invented Weir Weird Al Yankovic, in, in my mind, where he would take popular songs of the day and classical things and write lyrics. The one we had in the house in the very beginning is My Son, the Folk Singer. So the whole series is based on Judaism with my, my son, the nut, my son, the folk singer. If you know about um, being having a Jewish mother, you know what that means. Um, but obviously- You're not uh, a lawyer? You're not a doctor? What's wrong with you? He, he, but every Jewish family had his records uh, in the mm -hmm. early 60s. Uh, and um, the one that really crossed over big time, uh, you all probably know it's Camp Granada. Hello, Mada, hello, Fada. Hello, Fada. Here I am, man. Yeah, which is based, which is from a classical. Uh, you mm -hmm. might know the composer, I forget. Anyway, okay. Back to the group Marx Brothers, though. Pardon me? Back to the Marx Brothers. Oh, yeah. Because I did a whole, um, I was involved in a, a biography documentary on the Marx Brothers. So I was like up to my ears in Marx Brothers for ye a year of my life. Um, and back to this idea of Jews pretending not to be Jews, you know, Chico Marx pretended to be Italian. Right. He's right. Jewish. And Arthur, who is Harpo, his name wasn't Arthur. Did you know what his real name was? I used to know, but I don't remember. 
he, he had to change it because his given name was Adolf. And then he went to Arthur <laughs> and then he went to Bad career move. Harpo. So back then in 1902 or whatever, no one Adolf, Adolf wasn't a bad is name. not going to be a hip name. Yeah. So anyway, Groucho. It's amazing that uh, the, the meat tenderizer Adolf's lasted so long <laughs> after that. That's oh, the bad funny. joke. But see, <laughs> dude, we're into bad humor, right? There we go. Yeah, all kinds, good, bad. Okay. But was it my turn or your, your turn? turn? Okay. Um, this gentleman just passed away about two weeks ago. And he's not really into Jewish identity per se, but he is Jewish. Lee oh. Konitz? Is it Konitz or Konitz? And this yeah, is probably his best. Up, I don't, Konitz, it doesn't matter. You I say Konitz, Konitz, I say Konitz. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, I think, is one of his best solo albums called uh, Motion. Is that what it's called? Motion. Lee Konitz on Verve. Uh, I got two copies of this. But, uh, you know, another guy with two Jewish parents growing up in New York and really a leading guy on the West Coast cool jazz movement. Mm -hmm. And he was actually the last survivor of the original Miles Davis Birth of the Cool Sessions, which go all the way back to 1949. And uh, supposedly he died of the COVID thing, but he was 92. Capitol so Records, yeah. Throw out to a uh, shout out to Lee Collins, who was okay. playing well into his probably 80s. I am... Um... I, I'm gonna just show two folk artists because the folk scene uh, was tons of Jews in the folk scene uh, because of the anti-war movement, uh, because civil rights movement, um, a lot of Jews were on the front lines in the civil rights movement along with African-Americans at the time. Um, and obviously I, I, I could not do it without showing another Jew who changed his name, Bob Dylan. The reason I'm gonna show this one is because the song All Along the Watchtower is sort of, uh, some of the lyrics are taken from the book of Isaiah. Now, I'm not a very religious person anymore. It was bar mitzvah confirmed, went to Israel, but that one. And the other one I'm showing because there was a rivalry of sorts and one of my favorite folk singers, Phil Oates. And to me, um, Pleasure of the Harbor is a masterpiece, not a standard folk record, orchestration, beautiful piano by Lincoln Mayorga. Um, and, uh, you know, famous stories of Dylan kicking uh, Phil Oakes out of his limousine. He had the total opposite voice, uh, Dylan. But, um, you know, J Dylan went through his uh, uh, born again Christian period in the late 70s to I was early. going to say, isn't he Christian now? But <laughs> he had it for three years. Only three years? Three years only. It seems like forever, uh, which music is pretty interesting. And then he, when he came back, he reverted to Judaism. His big, in a way, announcement wasn't really an announcement because Dylan doesn't do PR announcements, but uh, his uh, oldest son, Jesse, he. Bar, had his bar mitzvah at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And that was his uh, re entry into uh, Judaism. <laughs> so, I, knew you'd, I knew you'd show some of the folk You know, guys. you got to show Dylan. If you're talking, you got to show Dylan. You know. Zimmerman? Z Robert Zimmerman. Bobby Hibbing, Zimmerman. Minnesota. Hibbing, Minnesota. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to talk about somebody who didn't change his name. Lenny Bernstein or Bernstein. I guess it's Bernstein. There's a Bernstein. You got Lenny on there too, West well, Side I Story. I didn't pick him be because I don't have this on vinyl. I realized I really want it on vinyl, but go ahead. I'm just gonna hold this up while you're talking. Nice copy that I gave to uh, our niece living in Harlem because she loves show tunes, but Leonard Bernstein, probably the most famous American conductor and very much always in tune with his Jewish roots. He wrote some sacred Jewish pieces. And uh, he performed in Israel. He performed in Israel a lot. Yeah, he did, he did a lot of stuff involved with the Jewish community. And the classical people don't change their names. It's one place that's cool to be Jewish is classical music. Joshua Heifetz. Yeah. And Itzhak Perlman. And Horowitz. A lot of composers and a lot of people coming from Russian East Bloc. But uh, this ha happens to be uh, a transcription of one of Beethoven's most famous string quartets for orchestra. And I just got this a uh, couple bucks last year. And I'm listening to a lot of classical music lately. And I think a lot of people, uh, younger people, don't realize, and maybe they don't because they just aren't aware, how important Leonard Bernstein was for music, not only classical music, popular music. Late 50s, and I vaguely remember, uh, he had a show at CBS, the, um, the I forgot what the Young People's Concerts, 
I think he had mm -hmm. like 50, 60, 70 episodes where we had uh, young kids in the audience turn them on to classical music, folk music, popular music. He was a fan of the Beatles. Uh, the Beatle connection for me is that he lived in the Dakota mm -hmm. uh, where John and Yoko Lee, uh, lived at the time, same time period. Um, so very important figure. But West Side Story to me is probably the most important. I wasn't going to pick this because I don't have the vinyl, but probably the most uh, uh, important musicals of its kind. Based American on musical story. and immigrant and story. Stephen, with Stephen Sondheim, <clears throat> another Jew. So we got, and uh, Jermaine, Jermaine Robbins, a uh, uh, choreograph, choreographer, I think he was Jewish. They're all Jewish in Broadway. <laughs> They're either gay or Jewish or both. Did we, did we mention that Jews were in the entertainment business, but we all know that. West, oh, yeah. West Side Story is important to my, my origin story because my parents went to see the movie on their honeymoon. And, you know, wow. the rest is history. There, there we go. Early yeah. 60s. You could have, you're, they could have uh, named you uh, Krupke. <laughs> who, who is that? The Officer movie? Krupke, remember? Officer Krupke, uh, it's the police mind. There's a song. I think oh, in song the movie. Called. In the, in the show. In the show, sorry. Okay. I think more of Maria. Um, my next batch is sort of the Chicago B blues juice uh, artists. And I'm, there's mainly three of them I'm talking about here at once. And that's um, Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper. Al Cooper, great producer, blues. Uh, Al Cooper started um, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears, produced him, was on the first album. He was uh, did this, a live show at the Fillmore with Al Cooper. I mean, with uh, Michael Bloomfield, one of the great uh, white Chicago blues guitarists, had a tempestuous life. They made this amazing record. This was sort of the offshoot of this live version. Mm -hmm. uh, after the second day of uh, jamming of this <clears throat> record, Bloomfield gets sick or strung out, doesn't show up. So Steve Stills drops in. And so side one is Bloomfield and Cooper and the other artists. And Steve Stills is only on side two because of Bloomfield got fucked up. Same with this record, one of the nights of the film where uh, he didn't show up. Great introduction, crazy introduction. But the other person with them uh, to me is Barry Goldberg, another Chicago uh, blues keyboard Barry player. Barry Goldberg, yeah. And, and uh, I love this, Two Jews Blues, it's mm -hmm. called. And it says Barry Goldberg and because contractually Michael Bloomfield couldn't be named for the record, uh, but he's on <laughs> five of the cuts. And Wayne Allman's on it, uh, but really great record. So Goldberg is known for playing with Dylan, right? Di he played with Dylan. He played Electric Flag. Uh, he plays. He plays this little club right down the street. He plays once or you know every month or two. They just yeah. shut this club down permanently. It's like up two blocks from here. I was looking wow, forward that's to seeing so him. Sad. I mean, he he you know he's on. You're right. Dylan Records. He was in um, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, but very important. Been on some a lot of major records. He's still alive. And uh, in your neighborhood, I guess. Still plays. Well, yeah. They shut down the club. They're going to reopen it. My son said, you got to show Mike Bloomfield. I said, I know Mazzy is going to show Mike Bloomfield. I'm a big Bloomfield. I saw him uh, tw twice at Winterland. Well, once I saw him, he showed up actually. One of the nights I went when Bob Dylan did that weeks uh, when he first started the Jesus thing. And, and the Warfield in San Francisco, uh, Bloomfield showed up and played. Uh, but unfortunately, he died of an overdose sitting in a car in San Francisco. Mm. Sad. Tragic. Yep. Okay, I'm going to take the opposite end of the spectrum and go with the Jews of Hard Rock. Where are we here? Who's this guy? Uh, David Lee Roth. Cover. David Lee Roth. I don't think he lives by the teachings of the Talmud or the Torah per se, but... Technically, he is a Jew. He's not necessarily, this is Van Halen one for you folks. Who don't. Do you, Jews don't walk around with their shirts off. That's the thing I've noticed. It's not a good look for most of us. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Unless they're in Miami Beach. Yeah. Heaven's, what do we call it? Heaven's waiting room? I don't have any uh, Van Halen. This has come up a few times. You don't have this either. And this was given to me by uh, a relative, but two Jews. I know you don't have any of their records. Kiss. Paul I Stanley. Him. I did see him once, so. Um, I saw Paul Stanley when he came out with, for the Foo Fighters, uh, what's his name, uh, Dave Grohl's birthday. But Gene Simmons is Israeli, and he's... Um, I, I don't Paul think I knew that. Fighters. And Gene Simmons is very pro-militant, pro-Israel. And to me, I look at this band, I don't think Gene would argue if I said, Kiss was really just a joint venture 
marketing and merchandising project that two Jewish guys came up with, and they happened to Absolutely. they happened to wear some funny makeup, but without the shtick, their music is you know like now, one or two. That, okay, so. We could have a whole discussion on shtick because shtick is an important part of my channel, and um, some people get it. So if, if you get it, great. If you don't, I'm not offended. You know, right? You gotta have shtick. What is yeah. your shtick? You gotta content. identify your stick and brand yourself. Conceptual yourself-ish. stick, and that's why I, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, conceptual art and Yoko Ono and that. And I get it. It's in a way, it's stick. Now she doesn't think of it as stick, but it is. <laughs> and I love, I love co- conceptual things. So I'm gonna. Uh, my next artist are two two young Jews. Oh, not young anymore. Obviously, they're old Jews now. But um, Howard Kalin and Mark Volan, who were in the Turtles. Um, Obviously, the big hit was Happy Together, uh, but You Babe, She'd Rather Be With Me. They did a great cover of It Ain't Me, Babe, the Dylan song. But Happy Together was a huge hit. And what's interesting about uh, Howard Kalen and Mark Volan is they really progressed after the Turtles, good and bad. I mean, they joined the Mothers of Invention. They're all over this record. They're with the Mothers for about two years. And a great famous bit on this record, uh, Mothers of Fillmore East, June 71 where there's that whole bit that Zappa goes into about um, the mud shark and the mud shark and the sex at the Edgewater Hotel in Seattle, Washington. Great story. I won't wreck it. You can Google it. Cool story. But then they did a- Is there a Jewish connection to that story or it's just a good story? Edgewater Hotel, you know, with a shiksa in a room with a mud shark. I don't know. But then um, they did a couple of solo albums and they went into the Maflo and Eddie, the fluorescent leech and Eddie. Um, and I suggest- That's and the I same probably, guys? Same Flo and Eddie are those two guys? I knew Flo and Eddie and I knew the Turtles, but I didn't know they were the same people. They were Flo and Eddie. And they're also, if you saw the uh, uh, Mothers of Invention or the Mothers uh, Uncle Meat, or no, what's the movie? Is it called Uncle Meat? Is that the movie? Hotels, 200 hotels, 200, 400 motels. They're all over that movie and bizarre stuff, almost avant-garde in a way. Um, this is more uh, commercial pop wise, but there is a great video. And if I think about it, I'll link it below after I link the Vinyl Rundown channel. Vinyl Rundown, please of subscribe. Flo and Eddie talking about management and getting screwed out of money. And they use a whiteboard and it goes on for about 10 minutes showing how, mar- how managers screw you out of money. They got totally fucked up uh, over the, the decades uh, financially. Like So, so a, a Jewish artist was screwed by a Jewish producer? Is that what we're oh. saying? It goes, each, <laughs> yeah. it goes both ways. We could do a whole thing of uh, jazz, club, uh, jazz club owners too, right? Um, and managers and producers and, you know. That would be a very long video. Yes. Okay. okay. My turn, I guess. Somebody who's very much in touch with his Jewish identity, um, but the records I have of his are not his Jewish ones. And this is not a picture of him. John Zorn, and this is his Naked City album. And Mazzy and I both have this record. I just this showed is, it on a different. This is a, a, a Ouija photo of a gangland slang that Ouija was famous for. But John Zorn is sort of the godfather of the, or I would say the ringleader of the New York underground jazz scene, avant-garde jazz. But he does, he has a whole Jewish thing. His record label is called Sadiq, which means something in Hebrew. Charity or something. Sadiq. You used Sadiq. to put your Sadaka. money on Sunday school. Like, like Sadaka. Sadaka. Yeah. Right. That's his record label. And then he has the Masada Project. So he used to perform with a group called Masada. And he has like four or 500 songs on the Masada Project, which is everything from jazz to klezmer to whatever. And uh, he's, you know, he's just very in touch with some of his music is just pure Jewish and some of it's jazz and some of it's crossover. But John Zorn, Naked City. One of my favorite records. This record, more about Japanese. That's culture. a great record. Is his, that, his, yeah. his label's called Masada? No, his, his label's called Sadiq. Oh, what's Masada? What, he has the Masada Project, where oh. he wrote the Masada songbook of four or 500 songs, and he just performs them and records yeah. them when he gets around to it. So When I was confirmed, I went up to, uh, hiked up in the morning, like at 4 a.m. on Masada. Masada is the big uh, mountain above, uh, right above the Dead Sea, where the Jews held up, and... That's a whole other story. We could do this whole story. We're going to do this whole thing in Yiddish after this, a whole Yiddish version. Oi, you're giving me spilkes in the Genektagazoid over here. <laughs> Oi, Gekaken, Geschlafen, Mitschlag. Um, 
I had a, I grew up with a Jewish grandmother with lived with us too, and the grandparents who were Orthodox. So I did know some Yiddish. But my next artist is we're going we're shifting into Austin and Texas, and the country music vein. All right, K. F. A man who up. ran for governor of Texas. I know who you're saying. It. Kinky Friedman. Kinky. Uh -huh. Kinky Friedman and his Texas Jew boys. <laughs> the opening track, We Reserve the Right to Refuse Service to You. Ride em, Jew boy. Ride, ride em, Jew boy. Ride around the old corral. Ride six million miles. Um, get your biscuits in your oven and your buns in the bed. Women's liberation is going to your head. High on Jesus and the top 10 commandments. Uh, I saw him several times, hilarious guy, super funny. Uh, they went to ABC Records, this record. Uh, there's a great song, they ain't making Jews like Jesus anymore. One, probably his most famous song, Hysterical. And then he went, he only, I think he only did one record per label and he kept getting dumped or whatever. Lasso from El Paso, Kinky Friedman. Um, Sold American, Ahab the Arab, Dear Abby, Kinky. Anyway, um, The Ballad of Ira Hayes, which is a cover, but um, great, great stuff. Great performer, really funny guy on stage. And his sidekick who's been playing with him forever, I think still his name is Little Jewford. So we always have uh, Kinky <laughs> Friedman and Little Jewford. Hey. I knew, you'd, I knew you'd show Kinky, and I don't have any Kinky, but I'm glad you did. Well, the best, the best. Uh, artists are and Jewish artists and Jewish comedians are so self-deprecating. That's the genius of it. You know, we'll di dish off anyone else, but we don't mind, you know, making fun of that ourselves. Is the, that is the history of Jewish comedy. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of comedy, I guess my turn. I've got the songbooks volume one and two by an artist that not that many people know. Dave Frischberg. I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Frischberg. So he's... He's still alive at 87, obviously, very Jewish sounding name. Um, he's a sort of a piano player, singer, songwriter in the Tin Pan Alley style. Hilarious songs, novelty songs, and sometimes he just does straight ahead jazz standards. But he wrote a song that you all loved from the early 70s, and he was part of the songwriting team. He wrote, I'm Just a Bill on Capitol Hill. So he was part of the team of schoolhouse rock people. But he has a lot of great tunes on his own. And With Bob Duro. Bob Duro was the musical director of Schoolhouse Rock. Not a so, Jew. <laughs> there's a tune on here that I think summarizes modern secular Jewish culture. It's called My Attorney Bernie. <laughs> and that's like My Attorney Bernie and My Accountant Murray, and he's got good seats to a Dodger game, and he got me in these crooked business deals. and you got to have a good attorney. I mean, that's like, it doesn't say Jewish anywhere in the lyrics, but it's, we know what he's talking about. Yeah, of course. He's written a lot of stuff about uh, baseball, Dodgers. Uh, Giant. He's got a song called The Sports Page. His most famous song, the song that I really started to learn, learn about, was called, have you heard this song? Van Lingle Mungo? Never heard it. What the hell is that? Van Lingle Mungo. Dave is a uh, baseball historian, and he took all the weirdest baseball player names from the golden age of baseball. And he just strung them together. Roy Campanella, blah, blah, blah. And the chorus is Van Lingle Mungo, which you? is the name of a, a player for the Dodgers. So you got to hear that song. Van Lingle Mungo. Heard when you first hear it, you're like, what the heck is that? So anyway, another Jewish New York guy. He's, uh, he's on the West Coast now. Dave Frischberg. Songbook one and two. You can buy these. This was for a you could find anywhere. Obviously somebody who did not change his name. Um, yeah. My next grouping, are, it's four artists. I'm just going to show them really quickly. And I, I feel a little bad because I short shifted the women. I don't have any Barbara Streisand records, but I put the women together, which is probably not ideal, but <laughs> new. Um, Let's see if you. Amy Winehouse. Amy, Amy, Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Carly Simon. Anticipation. The great Carol King, one of the King. greatest songwriters of all time. Carol uh, Klein. I just saw the musical a few. Uh, we did about a month ago. And um, talking about uh, gay, excuse me, uh, Jewish and lesbian at the same time. The great Leslie Gore. I didn't know she was Jewish. It's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. And her brother, I'm blanking out who he is. He's a famous Bill Broadway Gordon. theater who. 
Bill Gore? Just kidding. No, no, it's it's not. His name isn't Gore. Uh, uh, famous uh, Broadway theater composer. Um, anyway. Let's see, Gore. That's my women little section there. Well, okay. I, I almost brought a woman out here, Laura Nero. I forgot Laura Nero. Shit. I, yeah. And she, you showed Blood, Sweat, and Tear at uh, Spinning Wheel? Is that the one she wrote? She no, wrote one of their uh, She wrote the other one. Um, you, you may be, for, no. Um, and when I die, and when, and when I'm gone, you got. Dun, 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 and then she dun, also dun. wrote the uh, Fifth Dimension hit, Wedding Bell Blues. Right. Will you marry me, Bill? And she died of cancer very young. Very, way too young. She had to change her name. Do you know what her name was first? She changed one letter. Her, her name was Laura Negro, N-I-G-R-O. She changed it to Laura Nero. Anyway, sad story. She didn't live very long. Okay. I got two more very quickies. Okay. Or maybe three. This is a quickie. I don't have a lot to say, but the great Buddy Rich... Some call him the greatest big band drummer of all time. He was a practicing Jew, celebrated the holidays, and uh, proud of his Jewish heritage, although he doesn't have any Jewish music or personality, but good example of the... Okay. Um, I got just two more, or two more artists. Um, my last uh, main artist, I shouldn't say main artist, that's rude to say, but to me, one of the best American songwriters, and I did not include Paul Simon or Art Garfunkel, but I, I, I always say Randy Newman all the time. I think these are his, mo his two best records and uh, his, his two much, most mature records. Songs about slavery, songs about um, history. Uh, he has a, he's, songs about the rednecks on here, that song. <laughs> um, Naked Man is a great song. Um, I just love these two songs. Uh, and obviously this, You Can Leave Your Hat On, made famous by Joe Cocker. Uh, Great artist, Randy Newman to me is one of the great composers. Part of the uh, the Newman family is aunts and uncles. His grand, his uncle or great uncle or his uncle was Arnold Newman, the great uh, film Hollywood film composer, and Thomas Newman is his cousin, who's also a, a, a uh, film composer. composer? The, yeah, uh, I well, his yeah film and ho the whole Hollywood scene, and that's mm -hmm. why Randy Newman is mostly known by mo aside from short people and I Love L.A. Uh, his uh, like uh, Toy Story songs and soundtracks and great uh, soundtracks for movies like Avalon and um, uh, Barry Levinson films, Love another this. Jew who he uh, wrote a lot of scores for. So great uh, composer and very and here, here, uh, great sense of humor. One of his tunes sung by about 50,000 people a hundred times a year. Every time the Dodgers win, that's what they play at Dodger Stadium. I love L.A. I love L.A. Yeah, hundred yeah. times a year, not sixty. And it's great. There, uh, there's a great album. Uh, Harry Nielsen sings Newman before, and that came out even before anybody knew who Randy Newman was. It was ballsy to do a whole album of an unknown at the time. Anyway, your turn. I did the Marx Brothers uh, video with. Also did the Nielsen video. What's the documentary? His name is Nielsen or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Harry Nielsen and why do we? Harry Nielsen. He also did the Coltrane one that came out a few years ago. Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. I got in on the early part of his career. A nice Jewish boy from Sherman Oaks. Okay. Producer, director, Jews. <laughs> John Scheinfeld, not Seinfeld. Scheinfeld. Shout out to John if you're watching. Okay. Here's a record that Mazzy doesn't have. Who is this guy in the middle now? With the long hair. Is that Rush? Getty Lee. Yeah. I don't think Mazzy's a fan. I do Kenny, have two, I have two Rush albums. Good. I got a few. I was, 20, reading the was it 201, 201? Yeah. So Getty, his real name was not Getty. His real name was Gary. And his mother, with her thick Polish accent, said, Getty, Getty, Getty. It sounded like Getty. It just stuck the rest of his life. Both his parents met at Dachau. Both his parents were teenagers in a concentration camp. One went off. I'm sorry. They not met a great office. place for a first date. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, there's not much else to do there. Um, they actually met in Auschwitz and one went off to <laughs> Dachau and one off, went off to Bergen-Belsen. They survived the Holocaust, got married, Polish immigrants. And Getty does talk about that quite a bit. He's not really uh, observant Jew. Per, he's more of an atheist, secular Jew, but he very much talks about, and his parents were very open. Some people don't want to talk about 
Holocaust, but his parents always sort of brought him up to understand what they went through. So shout out to Getty Lee. My final um, choice, I'm going to lump some people together, but the main one I'm showing here um, are George and Ira Gershwin. Uh, to me, the, a lot of the songbooks, George Gershwin, Ira Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Johnny Mercer, some of the great uh, composers of the 40s, 50s, uh, were, happened to be Jews. Not all of them, obviously. I mean, people like Duke Ellington and beyond. Uh, a thing I learned that I didn't realize, because I was always wondering if Cole Porter was Jewish. He was not. But apparently Cole Porter wanted to get into that whole thing. So he says, I'm going to write like the Jews. So we started composing these popular songs using minors, putting minors in like, because not like small people in, in, uh, minor keys. in, yeah, in minor keys, not guys with shovels. And um, he, what he decided, if he used minor keys, because a lot of these Jews would write because it sounds like Eastern European music in a way. And there's a certain addiction um, in, in these songs, apparently, he thought pop songs. So, uh, but I'm gonna show this. Uh, this is a, I, I'm a big uh, Ella Fitzgerald fan. Obviously, Ella Fitzgerald was the first artist uh, Norman Grants managed and created Verve Records because of, uh, wanted to start a label for Ella Fitzgerald. This is a box set. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald sings the Gershwin song books with Nelson Riddle. Great collection. On CD, I have the Irvin Berlin stuff, the Mercer stuff, Duke Ellington stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of um, Ella Fitzgerald, not a Jew, but um, Ella. Not even Irish. Ella. Not even Irish, Fitzgerald. <laughs> right. I have anyway, some of those records. My, my final thing are the song, uh, the, the song books and the, um, the, the writers of the 40s and 50s. But that the, uh, the artist who drew that cover art, I have some of the Ella records that have art, art by that guy, but I don't really know who that guy is. You know, he's a French artist, as I recall. It, no, it's um, Bernard yeah. Buffett. Bernard Buffett. I have a couple of those, the original uh, vinyl. I think I have that one. I only have one of the original albums, but the box set came with all these. Uh, I got tons of these Ella and Irving Berlin. And, you know, Irving Berlin, you know, the Jews wrote all the good Christmas songs. We've discussed that before. Yeah, that's a whole thing. I mean, look at, I mean, there's Neil Diamond. There's so many people that we could have included. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with a book. Okay. But before I get to that, my son said, you got to show the Beastie Boys, three Jewish guys from New York or New Jersey, Adam Horowitz or something. Yeah. One of them died already, cancer, and Joey Ramone. Hey. Joey. But Riverside I, Records producer. My honorable mention is a guy named Nat Hentoff, who just, years ago in his 90s, and he's probably the greatest uh, jazz critic of the era, the 50s and 60s. He wrote liner notes for zillions of jazz records. He even wrote the liner notes for Free Wheel and Bob Dylan, because he did have some, right. uh, and he was very into, later in life he got very into civil rights and um, was considered one of the leading free speech advocates in the country. And for his last decade, he was writing for some Jewish website, Jewish World Journal, or daily or something like that and he really came down hard against uh the surveillance state and abu Ghraib and whether it was clinton or obama or bush he was very adamantly pro uh civil rights throughout his lifetime but really the most important jazz critic of his day i would say this is a kind of a collection of his essays that you know charles mingus and blah 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 i haven't read this yet my wife Yes. Library. I mean, you could do a whole video on on movies and the whole Red Scare and and um, you know the communist scare of all these uh, Jews that were uh, blacklisted, and that's that's a whole thing. But it it, it intertwines and in all this stuff, in my opinion. So, oi! So I didn't have any Manischewitz. So you got to have some delicious creamed herring and cream. You got the Manischewitz to chew. No, this is actually just. Tart cherry juice. Oh, who else would eat this on camera? But some pickled herring and cream sauce. Mm. Now, are you uh, are you like me? You're probably were you bar mitzvah? No. Oh, I was bar mitzvah, but I'm not probably. a practicing Jew. Right. And when mm. I went through that, and that when I went through the ancestry DNA thing three years ago, I found out after all these years I was adopted. Uh, but after all these years, I am only twenty three percent Jewish. But look mm. at me. 
What the fuck? <laughs> my mother's not even Jewish. Look at that punim. My father, my mother's a friggin' cracker from West Virginia. What happened there? My my dad is Jewish and my mother wasn't. That's okay. I identify. That's how right. I was raised in the Sunday school. It's a cultural thing. See, I, I think we both agree. I mean, we're both cultural Jews. We're not really religious, like maybe being Italian or Irish or Greek right. or whatever. There, there's a thing about, like we said, shtick, humor, uh, self-deprecation. Money. You know, my, my, my tombstone, gout. Lay, he never paid retail. Gout, gout. Gout. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. Well, that's the end of this one. Uh, Thank you, Mazzy, for inviting me. I love the collaboration idea. I'm going to start doing it uh, on my own with whoever I can dig up. Yeah, they're uh, fun. They're fun. Uh, thank you, uh, Greg. Vinyl Greg. rundown. I need this. Vinyl rundown. Vinyl, vinyl rundown. rundown. He's been away for a couple months on and off, but now, he, I mean, great jazz music he's into. He knows a lot about the history of the artist and, and the stories behind the record. So if you're not a subscriber of Greg, uh, with two Gs on the end, three Gs. One plus two. He, yeah. Uh, I'll put a link down to please subscribe because every time you click that button, a tree gets built and uh, planted in Israel and I get a dollar. I get uh, I some. Uh, and and then I don't I, get to wet my beak on this deal. So, yeah, exactly. Okay. I didn't play any Adam Sandler records either. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway. Love it, Mazzy. Thanks a lot. Peace. Mazzy loves you. Thank you. Bye-bye.